Hello everyone, I'm Anita with AnitaByDesign.com and welcome back to the Beginner's Sewing Course. So far, we've made three skirts and a top. Today, in project number five, we're making our first dress. The pattern we will be using is McCall's 6920. You're going to need your fabric and make sure you pre-treat your fabric if you're buying a fabric that's washable make sure you wash it and dry it before starting your project and if you are purchasing fabric that's dry clean only make sure you send your fabric to the cleaners before cutting into it you're going to need your fabric scissors your paper scissors and your tiny nippers or your tiny scissors for using at the sewing machine you're going to need your straight pins if you're using a knit fabric you need ballpoint pin, straight pins. For woven fabrics, uh, regular straight pins are fine. Or you can use the metal washers as paper weights. You're gonna need your tracing wheel and tracing paper, tape measure, seam guide, your seam ripper in case you make mistakes, and we're gonna be inserting another invisible zipper, so you will use this today, and your marking tools, your marking pencils and pens. Now, today in this pat or in this pattern, there are some different markings on the pattern sheets that you have not been introduced to. So I'm going to go through the pattern pieces with you before we start cutting. So what I want you to do is go ahead and grab your pattern sheets and we're, we're going to go through those in detail and join me back here. Let's get started. Before we move forward, I want to address my plus size sew sisters. Now, I have heard from you guys and I've read your feedback and I understand that some of you are not able to follow, follow along with the tutorials because the patterns that I've been choosing are not available in plus size. So what I have done is I've decided to refer you guys to a certified fit instructor um, who has a tutorial that teaches you how to grade your patterns up to a larger size. That way you will be able to choose the largest size pattern that's available for you and then you can grade it up to a size that's appropriate for you. And um, I think that's the best option. Her name is Andrea and she has a blog called Sew to Fit and she is amazing with um, getting proper fit on patterns. So I'm going to refer her to you guys. Her information is in the description box below. So you can go there and then I'm sure that Andrea will be able to help you to get your patterns to fit. Make sure you check her out and then come back and we'll start the project with the pattern uh, tissue papers. Okay, let's take a look at the pattern pieces. For this dress, we're going to need six pieces and they are pattern pieces one through six. Let's start on pattern piece number three. I want to show you uh, some markings that you haven't seen yet. This is the back piece. And the first thing you'll notice with this piece is that there are no multiple cutting lines on the sides. It's just one cutting line. So everybody will cut this same piece as it is. Now, drawing your attention down to the bottom, you will see this extension. This flap is for the slit that is going to be in the back of your skirt. And just here below you'll see a circle and a solid line. This circle indicates where we're going to start the vent and this fold line is um, you're going to trace this onto your fabric because this is the line we're going to fold on when we're cr creating the garment, the back piece, to create the vent. So make sure you mark this onto your fabric, the X and then this fold line. Coming up above, you'll notice on all of the longer pieces, the dress pieces, you're going to see these double lines here in the hip area and then up here above the waist. These are a fold line for petite. Okay, so if you're petite, then what you're going to do is you're going to bring the fold line on the bottom up to this line on the top and the arrow points in that direction so that you can shorten this pattern piece and I'll demonstrate that for you. You're going to take this bottom fold line, fold right on that line and then bring it up to the line on top and place it right on that line. 
press it down and then you're just going to tape that piece. You're going to do the same thing on the bottom and I'll demonstrate it again. Go ahead and fold on the line, bring it up to the top line and then you're going to tape down that piece. Okay? So that's for our petite sew sisters. Now moving over to pattern piece number four, you'll notice the only different or the same thing that we saw on three is on this one. It's the fold line for petite. Same thing on piece number one and piece number two. Now what's different on piece number five, piece numbers five and six, and these are our these are our facing pieces and what I want to recommend to you guys for these pieces and you can do it on the other pieces the dress pieces also but especially for the facing pieces before you cut them use a marker and outline your cutting line because what you're going to encounter on these pattern pieces is lines that twist and curve and intersect with each other and it's easy to get lost along the way as you're cutting. So go ahead and use a marker and highlight or highlighter and just highlight the line that you're going to cut on. Now you'll notice here on piece number five that there is a dark line here. If you read just above that line it says cut here for view B. We're sewing view A so you will not be cutting on this line. You will be cutting around this entire piece. And the same thing on piece number six the dark line and it says cut here for view B or D. We're sewing view A so we're cutting the entire piece. So make sure you don't make a mistake and cut on that line. That's also why it's important that you use a marker or highlighter to outline the line that you're cutting on. Another thing you will notice on piece number five is there's a half circle here and a dashed line. You want to make sure you trace transfer this marking onto your fabric because this is the cutting line or the uh, seam line for your V. The dress that we're making is a V neck. So you will find this on piece number five and then again you're going to find this on piece number one. There's the half circle and then the broken line. So transfer this marking onto your fabric and when we get ready to sew it together I'll show you how to do that. So those are all of our new markings that you haven't seen yet. So go ahead, prepare your pattern pieces, iron them out, get them cut out. Make sure you go ahead and make any adjustments to your pattern pieces that you need to make for your hip or your full bust adjustment before cutting your pattern, of course. Then go ahead and uh, cut it out. Cut out your fabric and then we will be ready to go. A few other items that you're going to need to construct your dress are, of course, your invisible zipper, thread and a coordinating color. I'm going to use white thread so that you guys can see my stitches. You're going to need some fusible interfacing. If you're using a knit fabric, make sure you purchase knit interfacing. And if you're using woven fabric, go ahead and get the woven interfacing. And you're also going to need binding tape. And this is what we use to reinforce areas in our garments that need a little extra strength or reinforcement. So make sure you get yourself some binding tape. You can get it in a coordinating color or not. You won't see the binding tape. It's going to be on the inside of your skirt and in the area where we're sewing in the slit. Okay? So I want to show you guys the layout for the interfacing. So let's take a look at the pattern instruction sheet. This is the area where you will find the layout for the fusible interfacing for view A. And this will be found at the end of the layouts for your main dress for view A. When you look at the layout for the interfacing for view A, you will notice that you have your two selvages and your crosswise fold. So that means when you lay out your interfacing, or yes, your interfacing for pieces five and six, you're going to fold your interfacing over on the crosswise fold. So lay it out flat on top of your table with the glue side, the bumpy side facing up, and then fold it over onto itself 
crosswise. Then you're going to place piece number five on that crosswise fold. And it tells you that on that piece with the right side of the pattern piece facing up. Then for piece number six, you're placing it with the wrong side facing up and it's away from the fold. So when you finish cutting, you will have two pieces of number six and one piece of number five. Now let's take a look at the actual interfacing and I'm going to demonstrate this crosswise fold for you. Okay, I have the interfacing laid out with the bumpy side, the glue side facing up. I'm going to take the interfacing and fold it over onto itself. This is the same way we would do it with the fabric, the main fabric, if we were laying it out with on the cross fold. So this is your folded edge where you will place piece number five with the arrows, and then piece number six will be away from the edge. Okay, so that's simple. And then once you have your pieces cut out and fused, I wanna show you what they will look like, pieces number five and six. So this is piece number six, no, I'm sorry, piece number five that's placed on the fold. And when you finish fusing, remember we're cutting away the edge so that we have that extra space on the edges. All right, that's what piece number five will look like, one piece. And then piece number six, you're gonna have two. And this is what it will look like. So this is your interfacing or your facing pieces for the back. And then this one is your facing for the front. Remember, we're doing a V-neck. So that's what it should look like after you cut and fuse your interfacing onto your facing pieces. Okay, we're sewing a sheath dress with princess seams. Now when you're sewing a garment with princess seams, you're gonna have your regular side seams, then you're going to have your front side, front side seams and back side seams. So let's take a look at the pattern pieces that you should have cut out already to see what they look like. All right, we have the back pieces for the dress and then the front pieces for the dress. This is the center back and you'll know that because it has this extension for our slit. And then this is the side back for the dress. Over here, you have the center front for the dress, and you know that because it has a fold and it has the V. And this is the center, the front side piece for your dress. And over here, of course, you have your facings. So I will show you how to put all of these together and we will make our first dress. So go ahead and set up your sewing machines. Make sure you wind a couple of bobbins so you, know, you don't run out and we'll be ready to sew. I'll meet you at the sewing machine. So grab your center front piece and your two side front pieces and we're going to sew those together first. So what you're looking at here on my table is the center front. That's the piece with the V. You're going to insert stay stitching between the notches on both sides of our front piece. So get your machine set up for a straight stitch and we're going to sew one half of an inch away from the edge with just a straight stitch from this notch to that notch and you're going to do that on both sides. So you go ahead and do that and then meet me back here. Okay, I have my stay stitching on both sides. So this is the front piece and I'm looking at the right side. So we have our stay stitching in. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to pin our side fronts to this front piece. So take one of your side fronts and you're going to place it on top of your center front with the right sides facing each other. And then we're going to pin starting from the bottom. Go ahead and pin. And then you're going to pin all the way up and make sure when you get to this area, now take note, the front, the center front is straight. The side front is curved. This is for the bust area. You need that curve. So this is when we sew this to here, it's gonna build in that curve that you need for your bust. So you're gonna make sure you line up your notches. And so you have the notch on your curved uh, side front in that area. And then you have another 
curve in this area or on this end and then you can continue pinning there so for this area where you have the curve it's going to extend beyond the straight edge on your front piece so what you're going to do is you're going to take this curve and place it fat flat against the edge of your front piece and pin now if you are using a stretch fabric then you will be able to just stretch you go ahead and place the edges together and stretch and make that curve fit against the flat piece on the front and then the same thing over here you're just going to stretch it to make it fit now if you're using a woven fabric what you're going to do is you're going to take your snippers or your tiny scissors and you're going to snip on the center front piece not on the curved piece but on the straight piece on the center front so you'll snip snip only going in as far as you would on a notch so as you, so to make sure you're not going into the seam line so you're going to snip on that side and snip on this side then you're going to check for fit and if it fits go ahead and pin if it doesn't if you need more stretch on that front piece then go ahead and snip again snipping as much as you need to to get both pieces to fit together flat so you go ahead and continue pinning and then you're going to place a 5 8 inch straight stitch from bottom to top going around the curve and um, back stitching at the beginning and the end and then you will meet me back here at the sewing machine here we have our dress front put together I have sewn both of my princess seams the next thing you're going to do is finish your seam allowances using whichever method you choose after you have done that go to your ironing station and you're going to press these seams open when you have finished that we will go ahead and set this aside and then we will start to construct the back piece the back of the skirt so go ahead and do that and then meet me back at the machine with the back pieces for your dress we're now looking at the back pieces for your dress these are the center back pieces and you have two of them and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to insert stay stitching right along this curve on the side of the back just to the uh, waistline so wherever it starts to curve that's where you're going to stop there is no mark there so you'll just have to eye it or you can go ahead and make a snip here right at the where it begins to curve so that you know to stop at this this um, little notch here now you're going to stitch your stay stitch this time on on the 5 8 of an inch seam line okay and then we will go ahead and apply our seam binding so I'll demonstrate one for you so take one back piece set the other one aside have your machine set for a straight stitch at a 2.5 length and insert it from the shoulder edge at the 5 8 inch mark or line on your needle plate and with stay stitching you don't have to back stitch you can if you want but you don't have to it's a reinforcement stitch so go ahead and stitch down to the waist above the waist line that my curve is starting right here it's straight and then it starts to curve out so that's where I'm gonna stop so I'm just gonna place my finger here this is just in case you don't make the mark a, a, a notch there to indicate where you're going to stop so that's where I'm stopping and you will do the same thing to the other back piece and after that you're going to go to the bottom of your skirt where you have the extension and looking at the wrong side of your skirt you're going to take one piece of your seam binding now you will cut two strips two inches long and you're going to use one strip on top of each each corner so wherever you marked the little dot remember we transferred this 
fold line onto our fabric and then at the top was an X or a little circle so we have this X or dot there you're going to take your seam binding and center it right over that that um, that X and then go ahead and pin and then you're going to stitch right down the center of that seam binding okay. and let's back stitch back stitch at the end and snip away your threads now the way you're going to know that you're on the 5 8 inch seam line is this fold line here so I inserted my fabric from this from the bottom and there is my line, the fold line, and that's at the 5 8 inch line when you extend into this area where you don't have that extension anymore. So you want to make sure you're on that same line when you sew on your seam binding. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other piece and then meet me back here. Okay, we're looking at the two back pieces that we have prepared. We have our stay stitching on the side edge of the back piece, and we have our seam binding at the bottom. And this reinforces the area where we will have a slit in the dress. So what we're going to do next is we're going to sew the side back pieces to the center backs. So take one and put it aside. And then you're going to turn your center back over to the right side. Now take one of your side back pieces and you're going to place it on top of your center back lining up this edge with the curve on the back piece. So place them together and the way you're going to know you're lining them up properly, the proper edges together is by the notches. So you look for your notch. We have a single notch here and we have a single notch there. If you were to try and pin it together from this side, it wouldn't line up because you have a single notch here and a double notch here. So if you check your notches, then you'll know that you're always lining your pieces up properly. So we're going to make sure that the right sides are facing and that these edges are lined up properly. So I'm going to flip mine over because we're going to pin from the bottom to the top. So go ahead and pin the side of your back piece to the side of your side back piece, if that makes sense. And we're going to pin and use the same technique that we used when we pinned our front together on the curve up here. You're going to pin together where the notch is, match up the notch, and then go ahead and match up your edge, and then fit that curve in with your straight end by stretching if you're using a stretch fabric or by snipping in more notches if you're using a, a woven fabric. So go ahead and pin this together and again you're going to do a straight stitch at a 2.5 length all the way from the bottom to the top. You're going to do that with both back pieces and side back pieces. Then meet me back here at the machine. Now we have our side back sewn to our center back and this is what it should look like. So you have two pieces like this. That's what they should look like. And grab your front piece. You have all three pieces sewn together. So grab that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to attach the skirt or the dress front to the dress backs at the shoulders. So let's move those. Take your dress front and place it in front of you with the right sides facing up. Now we're going to take one of our dress backs with the right side facing down so we're looking at the wrong side. We're going to pin the shoulder of the back to the shoulder of the front. And the way you're going to know you're using the 
correct side is you have the curves matching. So you're going to take this, matching up the notches, go ahead and pin, and making sure you're matching the seam. And pin. Okay, and then you're matching or just pinning over to the end. And remember when you have a seam allowance, you want to go ahead and pin that down so that when you're stitching it doesn't flip to the opposite side. You want your seam allowances sewn in flat. Okay, now what you're going to notice when you pin your sleeves together is you have this extension of fabric on the front side of your dress. It's okay. That's supposed to be like that. When you take your seam gauge and you measure 5 eighths of an inch from the top edge of your skirt to that point, that's right where you're going to sew. So this is correct. It's not a mistake. Now you're going to go ahead and pin the other shoulder seam the same way using the other back piece. Match up your notches. Match your seam. And make sure you pin down the seam allowances. And then pin at the other end, making sure that your raw edges are even. And again, you have that extension and it's supposed to be that way. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and apply a straight stitch at a 2.5 length right across the shoulder on both sides. So let's go ahead and do that. Backstitch. Making sure that your raw edges stay even. Backstitch. And then we have one shoulder sewn together. You're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. After you have both shoulders sewn together, we're going to sew our facings together at the shoulder seam. You have already applied your, you should have already applied your interfacing to the facing pieces. So you're going to, let me show you what it should look like once it's pinned together. This is what we're looking at. So this bottom piece, this is your front facing, and then you have your two back facings, and they're pinned together at the shoulders, matching your notches on both sides. And remember, you're going to have that extension piece, and it's supposed to be that way. So what we're looking at right now here is the back of your dress at the top. And when you turn it over, this is the front of your dress, and this piece is placed on the inside of your dress. It's the facing. So go ahead and sew your seams, straight stitch, 2.5, and then meet me back here with your dress and your facing, ready to attach those two together. Okay, we have attached our skirt, our dress front and backs at the shoulders, and I have pressed open the shoulder seam. I've pressed it flat, but we are not finishing these seams because once we apply or attach the facings, this will be enclosed. So just press it flat, just press it open. All right. And this is what it should look like. We're looking at the back of the dress and then you open it out and there's the front of your dress. Then for your facings, 
This is what it will look like after you sew them together at the shoulders. And this is the wrong side. So that's what you have. And again, on your shoulder seams, just press them open. Now we're going to attach the facings to the dress. So put this aside. We're going to take our dress and open it out. I'm going to actually turn it this way so that we have the neck edges accessible. But we're going to turn it over to the right side, not the wrong side, because we have to place the right sides together. So turn your dress to where the right side is facing up. Okay. And then once you have that in place, you're going to take your facing and you're going to place it right side facing or right side down on top of your dress. Make sure your seams are flat. So take your facing and place your V of the facing right at the V of your dress and then you will have your notches so make sure you line up your notches and your seams line those up and then your edges okay same thing on the other side you're going to make sure the V is in line line up your notches your seam and then your edges and you're going to go ahead and you're going to pin that in place and after you pin that in place, we're going to do a straight stitch all the way around. After we stitch that together, we're going to go ahead and stitch the armholes together. So actually, let's go ahead and stitch the neckline first, and then we'll go to the armholes. So go ahead and pin that around and meet me at the sewing machine. This is what your neckline should look like once it's all pinned together. Now, before we start stitching, I want to bring to your attention those extensions that we had once we pinned or sewed the facing and the dress together separately. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and clip those off before we start sewing. So just take your scissors and just clip it off even with the raw edge of your fabric or the rest of your your edges. Okay so clip those off that way when you come around to sewing that area it, it's not going to get you all confused. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and stitch a straight stitch at 2.5 length all the way around. And I'm going to show you what, we're, what you need to do when you get to that V. Okay, let's back stitch and stitch. As you come to the curves, just manipulate the fabric with your hands and take your time around the curves. Being sure to keep the raw edge of your fabric along that 5 8 inch line on your needle plate. And remember, once you come to your seam allowances, check the bottom to make sure that seam is lying flat and removing those pins as you come to them. And as you come to thick areas where the seam allowances are, if that fabric starts to flip the other way, just lift your presser foot and then press it back down to place it back under your presser foot. Now we are approaching the V and when we get to this air to this point you're going to stop so sew up to that point and stop okay I want you to back stitch at this point a couple of stitches then stitch back a couple of or stick 
stitch forward a couple of stitches. Oops, I went one more. That's okay. Lift your presser foot and turn your fabric to where your raw edge will be lined up with your 5 8 inch mark. And if you find that it's not, then you need to go back, turn it back. Okay, right now the what I'm looking at is I am on the 3 8 inch mark. So I need to sew down more on my straight stitch so that I, when I turn, this will be on my 5 8 inch mark. So I'm going to turn it around. And what that means is I did not go for, far enough to reach the center of that V. So I'm going to turn it back and I'm going to stitch another couple of stitches. And I'm going to back stitch and go forward again. Now I'm going to lift my presser foot and turn and check to see if it's at the, and there it is. It's right at the 5 8 inch mark. So sometimes it's, you have to play around to get to that right place if you didn't mark the center. Now we did mark the center, but my mark is gone. So it's okay. We're just, I'm, that's the way you fix it. If you happen to mark your center point and it's not there or you can't see it, actually that's the, the problem with my facing. I didn't make my mark dark enough, so I can't really, I couldn't see it at that point. However, if you made your mark dark enough onto your interfacing, you should be able to see that point and then you will stop and pivot there. That's what this technique is called. It's called pivoting. So go ahead and continue all the way around. Check your seam allowance. Manipulate the fabric around the curve on the curved edge, taking your time, and then continue to the end. And backstitch. And I just ran out of bobbin thread at the perfect time. Make sure you check your bobbins to make sure you have enough thread in there. If not, wind a new one or go ahead and put a, a new one in if you did two at the beginning. Okay, so there we have it. Our neckline has been attached. Now we're going to go and sew our armholes. So what you're going to do is the same thing. Just match up your notches, your edges, your arm seam, notches on both sides and the edges. And then you're going to sew a 5 8 inch seam, it's the same thing at a 2.5 length all the way around and do that on both sides and then meet me back here at the machine. All right, now we have our facing attached to the dress. The next step is to clip in at the V to just before the seam allowance. And then you're going to go around and you're going to trim off about half of the seam allowance all the way around the neckline. And when you get to that V, you're just going to clip that off and then start again at the other end, the other side. Okay, now our next step is we're going to understitch. And we're going to understitch the armhole area and the neck area only as far as we can go. So let's get our machine and let's start with the neck area. So find your V, your neck area. Here it is. And we're going to start or turn it this way 
I'm sorry, turn it this way <laughs> to where the V is facing toward the machine, okay? Then we're going to open it out. And if you fill in here, you can see how it gets narrower in this area. So you're going to place the facing and the fabric under your presser foot. And when you're sewing, you're going to be sewing the seam allowance down onto the facing. So your seam allowance is going to go this way toward the facing. So you're going to go ahead and go back as far as you can. And you just have to fill your way through. And once you have gone as far as you can go, go ahead and lower your needle and your presser foot. And you're just going to do a straight stitch all the way around. And as you're going, just make sure you're keeping the seam flat so that you're not sewing in any folds. So go ahead and back stitch and then stitch forward. And if you get wrinkles and folds like that, remember, just lift your presser foot and then press it down. And you want to sew close to the stitching that's already there. Oops, don't lift that, that presser foot while the needle is still moving. And once you get to this area where you snipped the fabric, you're going to stop. So let's turn this over. We're going to sew right up to the end where that cut is, back stitch, stitch forward, lift your presser foot and we're going to pivot. That means turn your fabric so that you're sewing in the other direction. Lower your presser foot and continue stitching. And again, we're only going to go as far as the fabric will allow us to go. And I think I have reached the end as far as I can go and then I'm going to back stitch and remove it. Okay, so we have our back stitching on the front. Now we're going to go and back stitch the armhole areas or the we have it on the front and the this front area. Now we're going to do the armhole. Oh, we also need to stay stitch right here on the back edge. We just did the front area, so we need to do the back edge too. So turn it over and go ahead and stay stitch from this end as far as you can go. And you're going to do that on both ends. Go in and stay stitch as far as you can go. Then when you get ready to do the armhole areas, you're going to do the same thing. Turn your fabric to where the facing is toward your machine and then go ahead and stay stitch. So you have Let me straighten my fabric out. It's getting all twisted. Okay, so you have the front neckline here to stay stitch as far as you can go. Then you have the back neckline to stay stitch as far as you can go on both sides. Then you have the two armhole areas to stay stitch as far as you can go. Okay, so you go ahead and do all of your stay stitching and then I'm going to show you how to turn your dress right side out and then we'll move to the next step. Okay, we have stay stitched our facing as far as we could go on all of the front, the front edge, 
the front neckline, the back neckline, and then the side or underarm seams. The next step is to turn our dress right side out or so that the facing is inside the dress. And the way you do that is you're going to take one back piece and you're going to insert it through the facing and pull it out from the other end. And let's do that with the other piece. Take your back facing or your back, the back of your dress and insert it through the facing and pull it out on the other end. Okay, and there is how you get your clean edge on the underarm seam and on the neckline on both sides. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the ironing station and you're going to iron this flat, making sure that the stitching, the understitching, does not roll over to the front. This is supposed to be on the ins or the inside of the dress. Okay, here we have the front of our dress with our neckline on both sides. You have your neckline and we have our armholes. They're all closed. Now we're going to sew our side seams together. I've sewn one seam together already. So what you're going to do is take your dress at the side seam and you're going to pin it from the bottom to the top. And when you reach this area at the top, make sure you match your notches. Oh, now the watch for those pins. The facings, remember we pressed those down. So what you're going to do is you're going to open them out and you're going to match the notches and pin. Match this seam and pin. And if you need to, you can put another pin in between there. So we're going to sew from the bottom of the dress all the way to the top with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And then you will go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. And you will finish your seams and press this open. And after you press it open, you can go ahead and flip this back down. And then I'll meet you back at the machine and we'll go to the next step. Okay, here we are with the side seam of our skirt sewn together. Here you have it. We've finished it and pressed it flat. We've also pressed over the facing. The next step is to in sew our back seam, the back center seam, so that we can install our zipper. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply a basting stitch from the bottom of our skirt to the middle of this hem tape, the uh, binding tape. Then we're going to do a straight stitch from that point to this X and then we're going to do another basting stitch from this X all the way to the top. This area of the skirt is going to be closed. This area will be open for our slit and above here is where our zipper is. So set your machine for a basting stitch to start and from the bottom of your skirt place your fabric on the needle plate with your needle just above this line that we transferred onto our fabric from the pattern sheet and this is going to be the fold line for our slit. So line up your the center of your presser foot and your needle with that line and we're going to baste, do a baste stitch up to the middle of our tape. Remember no back stitch when you're basting. And your guideline is this line that we traced. You don't follow anything on the edge of the fabric.
and when you get onto the tape you can just sew right onto the stitching to the center okay now change your stitch length to a 2.5 back stitch and then stitch forward and once you pass this vent your fabric edge should be aligned with the 5 8 inch mark and there mine is aligned when you get to the X stop and back stitch and then change to a basting stitch again and we're going to stitch from this point all the way to the edge of the garment to the, the top neck edge Make sure that you stay on, on the 5 8 inch line. And don't back, don't back stitch. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to go to your ironing station and you can finish the edges of your seam allowances individually. You'll notice I have finished my seams using my serger for the rest of the seams and I've surged them together as one, one seam allowance now and I've pressed them to the side. For my center back seam I'm going to serge them individually because I need to press this open for the zipper. So go ahead and finish off your edges and press them open and then meet me back at the machine. This is what your back should look like once you have sewn in your center back seam and finished your seam allowances and pressed it flat. I have opened out my slit. I removed the basting stitches and I removed the basting stitches here for the zipper. So this is the only closed area. So go ahead and insert your zipper using um, either the regular zipper foot or a invisible zipper foot if you have one. And then after you do that, come back here and then I will show you how to finish off your seam with the slit. Now we have our zipper installed and before we go to the hem we need to do some finishing touches at the top. So open out your zipper and we need to finish off this facing on the zipper tape. So you can use one of two methods that you learned about earlier. You can either fold the facing back onto itself with right sides facing and making sure that the teeth of the zipper are lined up with that fold line on your facing and then you will just do a straight stitch right on the outside of that stitching and then turn it over and you have a finished you have a finished facing or you can fold it back then fold it in half making sure that your guide stitching is on or that your stay stitching is on the inside and then line it up and then you can do a slip stitch or a whip stitch with a hand needle. So you choose which one you want to do and finish both both sides of the back. And then on your underarm seam, it's loose. So we need to tack that down. You can either use a hand needle and whip stitch it onto this seam allowance or you can use the stitch in the ditch method that I taught you earlier. So you would just turn it over and stitch right in the center of that seam until you meet the end of that facing on the inside. And that will finish off your top. Now for your hem. This pattern allows a two inch hem. So there's a two inch hem allowance in, in the cutting. 
when I tried on my skirt, oh, that's another thing. Go ahead and try on your skirt after you install your zipper to see where your hem falls and to see if everything fits properly. And I want it to keep my skirt the length that it is. So I'm only using a 5 8 inch hem. So I went ahead and put in my guide stitching at the 5 8 inch line. After that, you can go ahead and finish your edges uh, the raw edges and then go to your ironing station and fold over your hem allowance and then you can either do a machine stitch or you can do a slip stitch with a hand needle which you learned about earlier. Once you have sewn your hem in you're going to go and fold over this flap for the slit and again, you can either do a machine stitch around along the edge or you can do a slip stitch with a hand needle. And then that will complete your skirt or your dress. Okay, I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. And if you are continuing to follow, meet me back here next Friday where we will be doing project number six. Thank you for joining me, and as always, remember, when you live in your design, it is from there that you shine. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.